I'll first give you some background for this study. Uh, the method I used for the reconstruction, uh, a brief uh, summary of the results, and I'll compare those to measurements in geotechnical boreholes from the, the pre-consolidation stresses I measured there, and finally, uh, the conclusions. The Storega slide is uh, one of the biggest slides um, on submarine slides ever discovered. It's situated here on the west coast of Norway, just northeast of the North Sea Fan, which is a trough mouth fan associated with this uh, Norwegian channel, a, a glacial trough here. The head wall itself is about 300 kilometers long, and the run out up to about 800 kilometers in, in this direction. Uh, 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 quite a considerable number of, uh, of investigations were triggered by the discovery of the Olmenlange gas field, right in the middle of this slide scar. And the Noshkida of the old company were rather worried that uh, this may put, put the area in a sort of no-go area. <coughs> and the, this, the, one, the, the data I'm going to present is part of the, is one of these studies. So the purpose was to, uh, I mean, to understand the preconditioning and triggering of the, the slide and to reconstruct the stratigraphy, not only the pre-slide pre seafloor sea floor morphology, and to provide data for uh, improved tsunami modeling, because uh, it, the thickness of the slides moving, etc., is important in that respect. And the database was to use these, the, uh, the, uh, the 2D seismic database that's available from, from the area. If you look at the uh, more details of the slide itself, the, uh, this is the seafloor morphology. The general slope in the area is only about two degrees. So uh, this is uh, highly exaggerated. But the, the triggering is believed to be in this, has to be in, uh, in this mid-slope area with a retrogressive slide going uphill and stopping when, uh, when it reached the, the over-consolidated glacial sediments of the, of the shelf. The, uh, the gas field is here, here in this area. The retrogression itself probably branched into three separate, uh, separate lobes with the deepest one here in the mid, mid section. This is the, uh, the data set available, each color representing a different vintage of 2D lines. They were a mixture of uh, exploration seismics and a high resolution 2D. They cover this, this area of the slide, which is really the evacuation area. The, the depositional area out here is, is not covered. So the study will be limited to the actual uh, area where mass has been removed rather than also looking at the depositional site. But before, the start, before we could uh, start reconstructing uh, the, the, uh, the, the stratigraphy, uh, I had to choose uh, several regional reflectors, which I have boxed. These were chosen because they, they appear in most of, of the region and are quite continuous. The, the, the bottommost uh, one chosen was not, uh, not, not really influenced by the uh, Storega slide at all, so it sort of provides the baseline. The, uh, <coughs> but before the reconstruction could begin, I had to uh, interpret the, the uh, or trace these, these horizons on the seismic sections where these had not been interpreted. Having done that, I could start, start the reconstruction procedure, which was basically starting with the lowermost horizon and using the uppermost uh, horizon to make uh, an isochron. Uh, and this, of course, would have gaps where this part was missing. And then using and filling the isochrone 
doing an interpolation here, I could then create a new, a new isochrone and thereby construct a new, new horizon here, which was then became the next, the next, uh, the lower horizon for the next layer up. And so, using this, I could build up the whole stratigraphy. If we now look at the, this is the result of the seafloor. The, the bright colors here show where the, the seafloor has been reconstructed, whereas this is the existing seafloor here. And the, the total volume of the uh, missing, let's say, uh, sediments here is about 3,500 cubic kilometers. So the next question is how does this really, is there a ground truth here to see how this reconstruction actually compares to what is missing? And um, there are, within the slide scar here, these blue and these blue dots with rings are geotechnical boreholes within the slide scar. These two here are outside, uh, which can be used to uh, determine the the, the, uh, over, the missing overburden. I'll show two, two examples, one from this site here and another from this site here with an accompanying uh, north-south line going through site 22 and uh, an approximately east-west line going through site 99. On this figure, you see the, the seismic section going through Site 22, which has this official name. The, uh, the dashed lines show the reconstructed surfaces, whereas the, uh, the, uh, the uh, whole lines are, are the, the surfaces interpreted on the seismics. So what you can see here is that the reconstructed seafloor predicts that about 65 meters of sediment are missing whereas the geotechnical results indicate about between 30 to 50 meters of overburden is missing. Uh, there are some, this, this sort of uh, error margin here is due to the, you have to make some assumptions about the overlying sediments, such as density, etc., cetera, to, to actually reconstruct the thickness from the geotechnical measurements. And there's also a, you know, they, they, with several measurements, you get various results, so they, you get a sort of a, uh, an interval. And similarly for Site 99, which was the, the deepest site, here you can see it predicts about 250 meters of missing sediments, whereas the geotechnical results uh, indicate between 200 to 240 meters are missing. And again, the dashed lines are the reconstructed surfaces. So if we now look at the, all the five sites, we can see that uh, for site 99, which we just looked at, uh, it's the, the reconstruction is somewhat higher than the geotechnical sites. This one is somewhat lower. Uh, again, this is somewhat higher. This is uh, slightly higher, and this is within, within the interval. So I think it's a reasonable, reasonable fit, which sort of gives confidence in the, in the reconstruction itself, I feel. So that brings me to my conclusions, which are that the, we get a uh, reasonably good uh, reconstruction and with the total volume of removed material being about 3,500 cubic kilometers. And with that, thank you for your attention. We have time for a few questions. Yes. How old is this slide and are there other wider spread impacts? Or 
Well, this, the historical slide is 8,200 years old. 8,200. And it's the uh, latest of a series of big mega slides in the area. One slide occurring about one, one every interglacial period. So the preconditioning for the actual slide trigger is is probably uh, the uh, mixed deposition of contorites during interglacials and uh, a very rapid glacial deposition during the glacials. Uh, we haven't, uh, I mean, I think um, if, if we look at the, we can look at the chronology of the different slides by looking at the, morph the flow, the morphological f patterns. And the central big slide probably occurred first. And the, uh, you know, the one to the north the, is a shallower slide that probably occurred slightly later because of the, because the material coming from that sort of covers material from the central slide and in a similar manner the 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 southern lobe if you like was the last one to occur because you can see th these these deposits sort of flow over the the remaining the remaining ones i have a quick question um do the geotechnical data record much evidence for shallow gas that precondition the slope for failure? When, when these investigations were first started, the, uh, the thought was that uh, perhaps gas hydrates could play a role in this. But uh, you know, so there were quite a number of investigations to start off with trying to look at shallow gas and gas hydrates, but no shallow gas and no hydrates were actually found in this. In, in the slide scar itself, although north of the Storaga slide you have various active pockmarks known as the Niega area where you do find hydrates, etc. at present. But the thing as the trigger is, is at about 2,000 meters water depth. The, we don't really believe that hydrates or gas played a role in this but rather that the very rapid sedimentation on the North Sea fan itself caused transmission of uh, high pore pressures along rather permeable oozes into the lower slope area, which destabilized the sediments there.